Okay, Dr. Dom, welcome to the podcast. It's really great to be able to connect to you. It's been a while that we've been exchanging emails. <laughs> yeah, Alex, thank you very much for having me and yeah, for spreading the message and helping the many by telling them that health starts in the mouth. Truly appreciated your time. Thanks. No, likewise, I think it's such an important message to get across to people. I think you know, people are very much aware and our listeners are aware of the importance of the gut microbiome. They are very aware of the concept of leaky gut. But obviously today we wanna to talk about the oral microbiome. We wanna talk about the concept of leaky gums. Um, so before we dive into some of these concepts, are you just happy to share a little bit about who you are, the work you do and, and how you got into it for people that aren't yet aware of your work? Of course. So my name is Dr. Dominic Schwitz or Dr. Domme. Um, wait a second. Do you hear me? Okay. Oh, Dr. Domme. Um, I'm a specialist in biological dentistry. I studied conventional dentistry 15 years ago. And what we do nowadays is basically the next level. Yeah. I'm interested in optimal health and the biological dentistry 2.0 is the overlap of the high tech dentistry with functional medicine and health optimization or biohacking and the goal is actually it's optimal health and yeah over time I discovered that it starts in your mouth and it's basically started with myself if you see it this way yeah so 20 years ago I wasn't as healthy as I'm now and I was just looking for a solution to get me back on track it was before university actually started with nutrition with lifestyle with training working out and I was doing all these kind of things during my studies. Yeah, I was very much interested in biochemistry. Then um, after graduating, I wanted to become a surgeon. And the surgeon was kind of old school and still did the, the, the nasty amalgam fillings. And this is basically when it all clicked and I realized, oh wow, the one thing that I was missing in university is I can help people because we install so many different things in the mouth of a patient just to make sure that he can buy it without even thinking about the consequences when it comes to overall optimal health. And these silver fillings, which are now, those are 50% mercury, that's called a mercury amalgam filling. And I just couldn't do it because it's nasty and ugly and not aesthetic and it's not aesthetically pleasing. So I said, no, I can't to my boss. And I, yeah, and this is when I, had to look deep into all the science, found great mentors, Dietrich Klinghardt and other people that were talking about heavy metal intoxication and all these things for years, but you don't learn these things in university. So a whole new universe opened up for me. And this is kind of when I got addicted to it. And after helping myself, I just realized, wow, I can become a doctor and really help people getting healthy and then really healthy, which is optimal health. And for now, it's more like a full concept developed over the last 12, 15 years that, um, that I'm able to, yeah, hopefully help people with because still there is no awareness that mm. actually the mouth is part of your body. So kind of like it's in, the teeth are treated as a different unit because it's hard stuff, obviously, and you can repair it and you can just bite on it and but if you see it as the mirror to your overall health and to your whole body, you can see in one glance your whole ecosystem, the whole body in a tiny ecosystem in their mouth, if you trained like it. And I believe this is something that the world needs to know because people are suffering out there. We, have, we are living in an epidemic of chronic disease. The pandemic is not the main problem. It's the chronic issues. You name it. It could be neurological issues, could just be chronic fatigue, depression, mental health, Google or, or type in hashtag mental health, you find 40 million people searching with it on a daily basis. So depression. So basically people are not living an amazing life. Yeah. Mainstream medicine defines health as absence of disease. We are interested in optimal health. And this is a luxury. This is an investment and it all starts in your mouth. And obviously it starts with your lifestyle. By, by starting in your mouth, I mean stuff that you take in into your mouth because this is the entrance to your body. It's the entrance to your gut system. It's actually where the digestion starts on a daily basis. So nutrition, macronutrients, micronutrients, just nutrients, but also what has been previously repaired in your mouth from a conventional dentist that might trigger your body to be 
to become unhealthy. I call it the health killers. So one of the biggest enemies to optimal health that most of you guys out there are not even aware of is in your mouth. And what you can do about it is maybe what we talked in here today. So that you're then aware of it and have a solution for it because it's all about having fun and living the greatest life you can. And this is why I share all the knowledge and I think it needs to spread really wide because we want to end the suffering. And if we're all happy and healthy, it's better, right? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, you've mentioned quite a few conditions there, obviously that have all been associated with imbalances in the mouth. So Alzheimer's disease, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, periodontitis, caries, rheumatoid arthritis, esophageal cancer, cystic fibrosis. There was an article in 2020 that I remember reading that kind of essentially was looking at the oral microbiome and connecting it with all of those different conditions with specific organisms being sort of strongly associated with those conditions. So I wonder if a good place to start is sort of the oral microbiome, Dr. Dom. Are you happy to kind of just introduce this concept to people and, and how it can influence? So the oral microbiome is kind of like, the, you have to understand that there is a huge tube going through your body and it starts in your mouth and it ends at the back door. And we always talk about the microbiome further down in your gut, like in your, mostly in about the microbiome in your colon and that your small intestine should be sterile. Otherwise we talk about SIBO. And, but basically we are a symbiont of, a bit of let's say we are, we're only 10% human DNA and the rest is microbiome. And that's not bad. We need bacteria. We need, we need all these things. We are a huge ecosystem uh, within ourselves. And obviously, you know it because you have a little boy and what do do kids do for the first three years they put everything in their mouth everything goes through the mouth it's for tasting but also it is to accumulate the microbes it starts with breastfeeding and then with your nutrition and everything and the microbiome in your mouth is the most diversified and the biggest in the whole body literature is unclear about it because i believe there's not too many studies but around about four to tenfold the amount of the ones that are, or the diversity of the ones further down in your colon. You have anaerobic bacteria, you have commensal bacteria, you have various different bacteria, and they change within, and that's crazy, they change within 12 hours. I lately had a discussion with a colleague of mine here in, in my hometown, Tübingen is a huge university, and he's studying uh, the microbiome and how it changes. And I thought it's about three days, but he said it's actually 12 hours. Because what you feed into your mouth changes your microbiome. But also what you had previously been um, put into your mouth by a dentist will change your microbiome. So a breastfed baby has a total different microbiome than a baby on a formula. A standard Western diet microbiome, oral microbiome is totally different ones to our ancestral diets that Western Bryce discovered like years ago. In my opinion, one of the first um, biological dentists and explorers out there. We can touch on this in a second. But what I wanted to make, the point I wanted to make is, whenever you had dental work done, previous dental work done, you, you don't have your natural um, oral microbiome anymore. If you eat like we do standardized in the Western world with loads of sugar, processed foods, refined vegetable oils, conventional dairy and, um, and obviously gluten containing grains, it changes totally. And this is when the problems start. This is also when the problem to the dental career starts because a healthy body is actually immune against tooth decay. It's immune against gingivitis and periodontitis. And there's a new study from the University of Freiburg here in Germany where they investigated ancestral living and standard food. And what they did, they said, okay, they had all huge calculus and plaque and stuff, our ancestors, but they, don't, they didn't have any sign of tooth decay or gingivitis or any sort of inflammation. So they just tested it. The control group actually ate the standard Western diet and the other ones ate the, a more paleolithic approach. And only one month, 100% reduction of inflammation in your whole jaw um, and oral, in your whole oral cavity. And the conclusion actually was, maybe it's not the toothbrushing that's important. Maybe it's your lifestyle and nutrition. That's what I'm always saying, but I'm happy if research catches up because a lot of pragmatic doctors need research um, to um, 
try and trust new processes and always research comes last. So if you're an innovator, you don't have any research. You just have to see, okay, there's a problem. What is the solution? Let's just try and test it. And this is why we do start with nutrition and everything. And I believe in the future, there shouldn't be a repair business anymore. So basically putting us out of business, quote unquote, in, in, in exclamation marks, um, by repairing, but a dentist or an oral health doctor will see within one glance into your mouth oh, or smell that there is a dys dysbiosis, which obviously will also be in your gut then because this is the entrance. It smell, you can see that there are heavy metals installed or metals that are not supposed to be in your body. Maybe there's root canals. So if you train to look at it as, a, as the mirror to your overall health, you can see a lot of things. And the WHO, the WHO lately um, said that 70% of all the chronic issues start in your mouth, which is amazing. Nobody reads about it, but they stated it. They also stated that EMFs are very cancerogenic, but nobody reads about it. So probably takes another 40 years, but we're here, we're innovating things. And I'm very happy that we are able to at least repair biocompatibly now. And so totally metal-free, no root canals, whatever. And also use everything from the field of functional medicine and health optimization to help our patients getting really to the next level of health. So first to health, but then it's optimal health. Mm -hmm. I'm always saying it's an investment, but then I mean, you shouldn't lose health in the first place. But then whatever you do, even if it's just a tiny little thing that you change, should give you the dividend, which is health, more health, more of it. And yeah, and this is what I'm there for. And luckily, it started with myself having my own issues. So I was basically, as a kid already, having, I would say, chronic tonsillitis, multiple antibiotics. Then I developed acne as a kid, medication against acne. Then they took out my appendix, so classic stuff. And I was just thinking, that's just normal. And you take your medication when you're not good. I think I had an antibiotic in my pocket always. If I just felt something weird, like, oh, I just take an antibiotic and then drink with it. I also, my lifestyle from teenage years was more like drinking a lot of things and partying and smoking cigarettes. And this ultimately led to me crashing mid mental health. Basically, I was depressed from one day to the other when I was around about 21, 20. And this is early 2000s, so you kind of stigmatize, then you're like, oh, you're depressed, you're mental health, there's no solution. You're basically fucked for life. So and I couldn't accept it. I was like, mm, I just want to be normal again. When you're in there, you know it's really difficult. And that's why I understand my patients, if they're not healthy, you only want one thing, your health back. But I was just looking for it and, and learn about nutrition and lifestyle and everything that I could find to just optimize myself parallel to university, which I then later developed into a system and now it's systemized. Basically what I do now, I'm a creator or let's say an artist and my love language is just helping people with systems that would have helped me also 20 years ago in a fast approach. And it took me five years to realize that the mouth, funny enough, is a big thing and that a lot of you guys out there have one of the health enemies. And I did that lately. I was on the health, a speaker on the health optimization. And I know our common friend is Tim, Tim Gray. I believe you guys, he introduced me to you, right? Or yeah. Other yeah. 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 And so I was a speaker there. And I asked the audience, please stand up if you had any metals in your mouth previously done. So a third of the community, a third of the audience stood up. Then I asked, did any one of you had a root canal? Another third stood up. And then my final question was, did you have your wisdom teeth removed? And then the whole audience stood up. <laughs> and then you could see, wow, those guys in there, that's the, that's, that's the avatar, that's me, that's the people that are interested already in optimal health. They are doing the nutrition, they're doing the lifestyle, they're doing their grounding, the red light therapy, the infrared sauna, they do the IVs, they do the hyperbaric, they do everything, but they're still not superhuman. Why? Because they're missing one critical thing. And that's maybe the, the splinter that's chronically inflaming your body and putting your nervous system and immune system in stress mode. And that's it. It's a big chronic stressor. And at one point, it's important that you take care of it. I don't say freak out in here. Not at all. I just want to inform you and give you solutions on when to time what. That's basically the idea. Okay. 
Excellent. So, you know, we've sort of touched on the, the oral microbiome and how diet is a huge sort of driver of, I guess, a healthy oral yeah. microbiome. Um, I definitely want to come back to the amalgam side of things. I know that we're going to have a lot of listeners who are going to be super curious about your thoughts on that side. But, but before way, maybe it's a segue into it. This concept of leaky gums, I think, would be really good to sort of touch on next. As a, and my understanding, at least, is it's one of the potential mechanisms by which the oral microbiomes has an impact systemically. Yes. I just... I come back to exactly the question just to make sure that the nutrition part is covered. So I said and stated that a healthy body is immune against tooth decay and gingivitis periodontitis, so basically gum inflammation and inflammation of your jawbone and jaw structure. And Western Price already realized this by traveling to ancestral living people, endogenous people. He went to seven different cultures. He went to Switzerland, Luchental. He went to um, the Aborigines. He went to see the Africans. So basically a hunters and gatherers. And he realized that they were grown beautifully healthy without any sort of tooth decay if they ate their regular nutrition. As soon as those people had, had um, like the possibility to eat processed food or white man's food, they would develop crowded teeth, tooth decay, mouth breathing, gingivitis, parentitis, look like little zombies. Basically like our teenagers in the Western world look still and he realized it's just a lack of nutrients in the depleted nutrition. And standard Western diet is basically formed out of these foods. Gluten containing grains, sugar, every dentist tells you about sugar, but extremely important refined vegetable oils, trans fatty acids, and, and let's say conventional dairy. Raw, I have to say conventional dairy because raw A2 dairy is difficult to get. So, but back then, and Western Rice found out that actually people that ate raw dairy, that stuff, like butter especially, contains stuff that helps build your teeth and your bones. So it's difficult to explain. I just call them the core four. And this is step one in how to design your healthy nutrition is that you leave out foods that are man-made and processed. And the Native Americans, they helped Western Price with information about scurvy, which is again leading to the gingivitis. Scurvy is basically if you lose your tooth as, a, as the sailors. The sailors back then, they lost their teeth because they had no vitamin C. And we need vitamin C to form new collagen. And over time, you have a vitamin C depletion, you lose your tooth because your periodontium just um, collagenases were active and yeah, they just get loose. And he asked the, the Native Americans because they didn't need any vitamin C in his terms, how they get it. They're like, okay, you told us you not eat the, the white man's food, so we will tell you our secret. And they tell them whenever they have a big moose and they hunt it down, there will be two sort of tiny little things at the back of the kidneys mm -hmm. that they split in equal parts and give it to the whole tribe, which is basically the adrenal glands containing loads of vitamin C. And this is how they make sure, make sure to get it also in an animal-based living. And I found that fascinating. I find all these things fascinating because basically what we need to learn again is how to live our lives naturally. And we have the clues. So it's just over the last hundred years, everything changed in the wrong direction, but we have to come back to it. And then your all oral microbiome is perfect because nature has it right. You come to the world beautifully. Everything is perfect. You just change it epigenetically. And then the problem come. Then you have a cavity because of mineral deficiencies, nutrient deficiencies. Then we develop leaky gum because we have a uh, chronic stress and inflammation. And leaky gum is basically just your, your gum is outside body. It's skin. It should be super tight attached to your teeth because it's a barrier to hold all the bacteria that are in your mouth. They're supposed to be there, but they should be in your mouth. So they can go inside. As soon as it opens and it's getting leaky, it's kind of like leaky gum. These bacteria can jump in your system. And this is why they find typical bacteria that are usually in your mouth, like porphyronas gingivalis or, or something like that, in, for example, in your hip joints after removing a hip graft. And they're like, why is that even happening? How is it possible to get a, an oral microbe into your hip joint or into your joint? This is because you already have openings there. And it's the same, pro it's exactly the same as leaky gut. Just sonulins open up, we basically have 
enzymes activated, MMPA, they are called, this metallomatrix proteinases, and they basically eat up collagen. And then it opens up, zonulin breaks open, and then for bacteria, everything that opens is like, it's like a huge door. They're tiny, they're microscopically tiny. So you should have a very, very close skin there. It's the same for your outside body. It's the same for your whole tube. Basically, the tube that starts in your mouth and ends there, which is the, the gut system, is outside body. You know, when you have a scratch in your skin, that you're afraid that bacteria from your outside come into the inside. It's the same concept in your mouth. It's everywhere the same. The skin needs to protect yourself. And if it's opening, it's a problem. And your diet and nutrition may be leading to chronic inflammation starting in your gums by little bleeding gums you see it that your whole gut system is also bleeding kind of and opening up and this is the entrance for autoimmune disease this is the entrance for neurological disease this is the entrance for a for an immune system that is out of balance and attacks everything and this again is then back down to your genetics whatever happens some people are chronically fatigued some have thyroid issues some have a combination some have irritable bowel syndrome Others have Alzheimer's or Parkinson or even cancer. It's all connected. I'm not saying that your mouth is the only thing, but I'm saying if you already do all the other things that we're talking about in biohacking and health optimization, and you're not superhuman, you might need to start in your mouth. And it's all about going back to your roots. And then you have beautiful teeth. And this is the, the good thing. Look at the teeth. If they're bad, if they're mushy, you it's a clear sign that you have poor health overall. That's just so simple. And this is something that you don't learn in university. And this is something that we have to learn in university because then we can train parents and tell them, hey, your kid has a cavity, clear research, gluten intolerance, vitamin D3 deficiency, take care of this and here are the solutions. So this is why I also have developed an online course that is showing everything. So you learn everything about the oral health, but you also learn the 80% that you can do right away because no patient can see me straight away. I don't do any surgeries or any dental work before we prepare our patients to be really in a environment to heal and be anabolic. So it's all about the learning journey. It's all about helping you guys out there reaching optimal health. It's about timing different things. I just tell you at one point, you might need to look into your mouth and look for health killers, metals, root canals, cavitations, which develop after any sort of tooth removal. In the Western world, most of us, unfortunately included, had their wisdom teeth removed. That's why the whole audience in the Health Optimization Summit stood up. And then you have chronic inflammation. And we know in all medical world, chronic inflammation depletes your body again. And it's, it's, a, it's a big stressor. And we don't want to have a stressor inside our body. Yeah. I mean, a couple of things I just want to sort of touch on there. One, you mentioned um, sort of mouth breathing and how that can obviously disrupt the microbiome within the mouth. And that's definitely something that I see really commonly um, in clinic, people that have some degree of nasal congestion and as a result are kind of forced to breathe through their mouths. Um, the second thing is a lot of times people comment on having like a white layer on their tongue, which my understanding would be a sign there's kind of dysbiosis and maybe a biofilm that's developed on the tongue. Um, would you kind of agree from that? perspective in regards to kind of these white or yellow sort of coverings that people get yeah it can be a biofilm forms within hours anyways that's just how microbes organize themselves or bacteria yeah. um you definitely need to clean that off but yes it can also be a sign of dysbiosis overall or it can also be a sign of various different materials in your mouth so it's it, it needs to put, be put in context sure because most people actually don't have a healthy teeth structure i mean personally i only have the wisdom tooth issue and don't have any root canal i don't have any cavities so for me it's easier to to find the solution but yes it's a it's a combination but if you have a white tongue co uh, tongue white coated tongue you probably have any sort of issues going on in your system okay on your nutrition leading over to maybe you had repair in the, in the in the past wrong microbiome it's the whole it's the whole thing and you cannot see it separately. It's your whole body. So I'm treating the whole body. It can have, for example, you have a root canal with an inflammation. You don't even feel it in your jaw, but maybe you have a chronic frozen shoulder that's directly connected. So this is how we have to understand the body. 
it's it, the body works in chains kind of like um, and i can tell you from experience wherever you have the pain it's most likely or wherever you have the symptoms it's most likely not the root cause it's most likely just the tip of the iceberg and then you have to see okay where is it and a lot of times the mouthpiece <laughs> is a part of it and yeah that's so important what was yeah. the other question um oh, yeah your mouth breathing yeah mouth Mouth breathing is an adaption. So we are designed to breathe through your nose um, because your nose is a filter system. And also nasal tissue is kind of like it's producing NO, which is a, a major antioxidant and also helps to dilate vessels and everything. So if you breathe through your nose, you, your whole tissue widens, you get better nutrient absorption and produce NO as an antioxidant, which also helps your oral microbiome and your oral um, cavity for your immune system, etc. And the problem is it actually starts with breastfeeding. I know a lot of you um, women out there are not able to breastfeed, but in this time, it's also the narrative that a lot of women don't want to breastfeed because of beauty or whatever. So I can tell you the best thing you can do actually for you and your baby, if possible, is breastfeeding because breastfeeding bonds together, which is really, really important for our hormones, oxytocin, but also helps you to develop the baby's jaw and the nasal breathing because if you if you suck on a nipple you activate the whole jaw musculature it's a masseter it's a whole it's a whole tmj joint everything to grow forward to make a big mouth and big um, thing and also at the same time so you need 10 times more strength to suck on a nipple to get the milk out of uh, the chest as if you would um, suck on a baby bottle so just that grows your jaw but also at the same time, the baby is only able to breathe through the nose, which helps widen the whole palate, which you need later on to have space for your teeth. So it all starts straight out of the womb. Actually, it starts before, but just to make it simple. And ideally, you breastfeed for 18 months and if possible, even longer. Um, but of course, you need to be prepared for this. You, the woman needs to prepare herself for pregnancy, so that the pregnancy is easy, that you don't have pregnancy issues, but also the baby is kind of like a parasite in your body. It's also about you as a mom, if you're not prepared very well, and if you don't feed yourself very well, again, nutrition, then your body gets depleted because the baby is priority. And you don't want to do that. So feed yourself, heal yourself first, and then get a beautiful, healthy baby, less problems in, in pregnancy, less problems with conceiving, and then most likely breastfeeding works because this is how nature is designed. If breastfeeding and all these things don't work, it's the same thing as you get cavities and tooth decay and chronic issues. It's just an epigenetical problem that, that led to this over time. Basically, it's the past 25, 30 years that led up to this event. That's why it's so critical to um, start preparing. Yeah. And you later on have nose breathing because our teenagers, grow to they grow too narrow you can see it on your face or on my face we're way too narrow which then leads to not having enough space for our wisdom teeth which leads to having them removed because we need braces crowded teeth then we start breathing with an open mouth because we always have inflamed tissue chronic being inflamed because we ate dairy that we're not tolerating because it's a1 casein and the immune system is allergic that's for me i had a million of antibiotics which ruined my whole microbiome and I only was allergic to milk and my tonsils reacted. I wouldn't have needed any antibiotic. I just would have needed somebody to tell me, oh, dude, your immune system is going berserk because you're allergic to cow's milk. Leave it away. That happened when I was 16 years old, but not 16 years before. So um, when I was growing up, I probably had not had the right nutrition. That's why I needed braces twice. And I still have a bad bite. So for my kids, it's important that I teach this, that we want to live a healthy life, that they learn about nutrition, that we look into our past. And because the last 100 years is not our past. Our past is like 200,000 years. And we basically were hunters and gatherers. And you can still see it with the Maasai or the Hatsabe or people that live like it. They have beautiful faces there. As soon as they get processed foods, it changes because of depletion. And it doesn't and it's not calories in, calories out. That's just wrong. And you obviously can fortify everything with, with vitamins and stuff, but it's about nutrients that you get from nature. And this is what Weston Price already said. So that's why it's so important. And your mouth is actually where it all starts. 
health starts in your mouth. Absolutely. And I think I'm sort of starting to connect, I guess, everything that we've discussed so far in regards to the microbiome and the gums. Um, I would love to just probably finish because I'm mindful of your time, Dr. Dom, on sort of the amalgams side of things. And I've heard you speak before, and obviously it's in your book around the concept of, for example, mercury being essentially antimicrobial in its own right and having a whole bunch of other sort of problems or concerns that we have with it. So um, feel free to kind of direct this answer where you would like to go. But I think for our listeners, it would be really helpful to get some form of understanding on you know, what does it look like to have amalgams removed when you go and see a biological dentist? What should they be looking for? Yes, no problem. So one of the health killers that you're not aware of are metals overall. You always have to put into perspective the dentist works for you to restore your bite. So over the last 50 years, obviously various different materials were used because they just work for biting. They're craftsman materials that work. And metals bring in different challenges. Again, your immune system, is not supposed to um, have metals in your mouth every day on a daily basis and can react to it, then these various metals that you put into your mouth can be very toxic, like the mercury. But the third component or the third challenge when it comes to overall metals in your mouth or in your body is that we're living in an electromagnetic world. It's not, it's, um, there's 3G, there's 4G, there's 5G, they even talk about 6G, there's Wi-Fi, and we are a battery ourselves. So body electrics is a thing and everything interferes. So any metal in your mouth or in your body is an antenna. And this can interfere with your own battery. Let's say it make it easy and change the whole gradient within mineral balance in your body. So amalgam fillings is the most prominent because that's what insurance covers, at least in England and in Europe or in Germany. Those are the, the silver, the nasty black fillings which contain 50% mercury. And mercury is the most toxic, and I said it a million times, non-radioactive element known to men. So it's the most toxic and you have it in your mouth. And as dentists, we have to remove it under special requirements. We have to actually call somebody in to put it because it's so toxic, it's toxic waste. Why would I put it into a mouth of a patient? Obviously, because it works for biting, it's antimicrobial, it's easy to do, but it comes with a big problem and a big um, issue. We have toxins, which is the mercury, heavy metals. We chronically intoxicate your body. That's normal because when you bite on it, when you chew on it, when you drink acidic stuff, when you go to dental hygienist, you will um, get more mercury vapor. That's the problem. It's not that you lose half of the filling. It's just a vapor. It's HC0 that waves out of the tooth every day, two to three micrograms, so millions of a gram. And they chronically intoxicate yourself because this mercury vapor is so toxic, it goes through everything. It just goes into your cell and basically the cell has to die. And it costs you a lot of nutrients to maybe help detoxing it. So it puts a big, big burn on your body. And this is why when you go to a dentist and remove it, you need to be very, very um, precautious. So there are biological dentists that know how to remove amalgam safely, but a conventional dentist doesn't know this. A conventional dentist is trained to just drill it out. If you drill it out, you obviously have way more mercury vapor. You have many more mercury and heavy metal particles that you just swallow and that just will be in your system forever, kind of like. And this is why there is a protocol, which you can find on my Instagram, for example, or in the online course, it will be that you can present to your dentist. It's a checklist on how to remove amalgam safely. So the dentist will use a rubber dam just to make sure that no particles will be swallowed. Um, we use a special suction which goes over the tooth that help suck it up better. Then we have a kind of like a big filter system. It's a huge, it's a huge tube right next to your jaw, which sucks up 99% of the mercury vapor. You also will have um, oxygen, uh, regular air in your nose so that you don't oxygenize the, uh, that you don't oxidize the mercury. And then we put in chlorella in the cavity to sort of bind the, the last particles. And we also have you obviously on the, right, on the right nutrition and support for your liver and detoxification beforehand. So it's various different things that you should do. Why? Because we don't want to get any more mercury in your system by taking it out. That's the goal. You obviously had it for 20, 40, 30, 15 years, 
And this is something that is later to be dealt with because it's maybe in your tissue stored and that's when heavy metal chelations come in, but not at this time. First things first, remove the source and your body heals itself. You don't want to do any chelation while you're still having any sort of metal in your mouth. That would be the total wrong um, approach and let, leading to problems. So you need to find a dentist that is certified. There are different ones. Um, so we train biological, we train dentists to become specialists in biological dentistry and ceramic implants. They obviously know how that works, but they are only, a, let's say, 40, most of them in Germany, Switzerland, Austria, a few of them maybe all over the world, but not too many. There's only one guy I know in the UK that I'm always recommending. It's my friend Goran in the U Clinic in London directly. He will do it. But you can look up the IAOMT or just look for a SMART certified dentist, S-M-A-R-T, which stands for Safe Metal Amalgam Removal Technique. They are not especially biological dentists dentist trained how I would train, like the next level, but at least they know how to remove the melanin safely. So I would rather choose those and don't go to any conventional dentist and actually don't freak out. Just know, okay, they are melanin fillings, but basically I should start with my lifestyle, changing my lifestyle, changing my nutrition. Again, this is where the online course comes in and we tested it as a beta course phase with 25 people. And I, what I wanted to achieve in this beta course was it was live. 15 straight days and I wanted to see if they can flip their mindset and sort of transform when it comes to the thought process and obviously learn everything about it but also know how to change their lifestyle so it's it's a it's an everyday 20 to 30 minute approach where you see me like this it was in a zoom call and I I walk you through all the pieces what is stress what is healthy in me what is all the oral enemies? What can you do about it? But also how to design your nutrition. It's called my food design concept, how to design macronutrients, how to get the most nutrients out of your food. The food design is basically thinking in nutrients, which means I'm not interested in, in your mindset. You can be, be a vegan or vegetarian or carnivore or whatever. It's all about the nutrients that you're getting. For some mindsets, it's more difficult. For, my, for, one, for some, it's easier or more foolproof. And... This is what you learn first, how to design it. But then also it's about the micronutrients that you have the, the knowledge about the most critical ones that you can also decide later on in this, let's say information overloaded environment, what to pick and choose. Because I wanna just be the success partner on your journey to optimal health. And this is why I thought it's ideal to copy my knowledge. It's also in the book, but the, the online course obviously more advanced to copy it into the matrix to just help you guys and help the many. I said it on the Health Optimization Summit. I want to help at least 1 million people to get to optimal health, but then overall, even make it bigger. This is not personal. That's not possible alone. So that's why I'm always interested in working with all the wolves out there that are interested in health. All the patients that come see me at the end are on the same mission and will, by helping heal themselves, help the many. I think that's the idea that we all work together and co-elevate. It's not about competition. You have to leave that away. So I had that part. So as an innovator of the system, you go through the normal phases. At first, it's ridiculous. Then you get violently attacked. And in the end, it's just a given. The violently attacking phase was already, luckily. And um, now most of my friends from university are actually becoming biological dentists. And the young and wild people, like actually the generation after me, they are already more interested. They know, okay, there is something more than just repairing teeth or just be a normal doctor. There is something to really be a blood detective, help people with their lifestyle and help them, help you guys out there to take responsibility over your life and then give you the solutions of what you can do, which are approached for years that just work. And you just have to start with one thing. And for me, that's mostly starting with nutrition and your lifestyle because then you feel oh, wow, I'm getting more energy, I feel better. And then you change over time, you change your mindset, you want to learn the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And then you already have like two or three months in or even longer, and then you realize, okay, wow, there's something in my teeth. And then you speak the same language as myself, and then you can see us in the clinic and we do a whole health optimization week where we combine it. I will plan the whole, the whole job, like whatever has been previously done dental-wise will be removed and replaced, no more metals, obviously removed safely, no more root canals, 
obviously removed safely and then immediately a ceramic implant to restore the teeth if needed. No titanium implants. That's my specialty. I'm a ceramic implant specialist and I've placed over 5,000 pieces uh, within the last 10 years. So that's really a lot of information, a lot of knowledge here. And then also obviously we deal with the cavitations. And then we also train you to use the nutrition and the macros and the micronutrients, use IV therapy. We use everything for biohacking or health stimulation. We have a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. We have infrared sauna. We have red light, everything, just name it. And if we don't have it, we work on it to help your body heal so that you don't go to the dentist. That's what Tim said to introduce me. He's this, 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 and this, and a true pet, a functional medicine practitioner. This. He's not really a dentist. That's what it is. I'm not really a dentist. I'm actually a surgeon, but um, I'm just a health optimization or health enthusiast, health expert, starting from the mouth. That's it. And I believe that we all, all of us out there, all my friends that do the same, we all need to be a huge wolf pack to help you guys out there. And then you have the same life because this is um, fulfilling. Helping people getting out of their suffering. That's fulfilling. If they then change their spouse or help their parents or whatever, it's really, it's really big then. That's how we think. And yeah, I hope Brilliant. that that's why I do all these podcasts. That, that's why I give all these congresses and speeches. That's why I wrote the book. It's not about me. It's about the message and it's about helping the many. I'm just, uh, I'm just the creator or the innovator or the guy who needs to spread the knowledge. Um, and I'm very proud or happy that I, that I was able to learn it through experience. So when you're in there depressed or whatever, unhealthy, you feel like shit and you think, fuck, why is this happening to me? Sorry, excuse my word. Uh, why is this happening to me? But then 20 years later, in retrospect, I see, okay, it happened to me. You have to go through this to really find who I really am and that I'm able to get over it and then teach others. Yeah. This is why it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's why we all are aligning. And Tim is doing a very amazing job by bringing all the game changers together. Because I was looking for the lone wolf pack in 2019. Then he came in with his first Congress. And the last one this year, 2022, it was big. It was the biggest worldwide already. And this is only the beginning. You cannot imagine how big it's going to be. And I believe you out there listening to this are interested. And, and if I could just give you the information that if you take responsibility and you decide what's your why and that you want to change, there is a solution. And all of us are able to live happy and healthy and find their passion and help others. That's it. Like a little kid. Just go out and play. Perfect. I have one final quick uh, in some ways, I think, very basic question, which is to bring this back to today, to today, to the general public, you know, we talked about sort of diet and a lot of other things, but for, for a lot of people, they think about obviously their oral hygiene, brushing teeth, yes. mouthwash and flossing, maybe tongue scraping. Yes. So from my perspective and from what you've said today, we're thinking potentially a, a fluoride free toothpaste, obviously. I know there's really good evidence showing us that conventional mouthwashes are actually a, a big no-no for our microbiome. Um, flossing, obviously, as far as I know, is something we should be doing. Um, is there anything that you just want to quickly touch on? Have I missed any sort of key points with that just basic day-to-day -day stuff? Yes, you just have a you just have to have a basic oral hygiene regimen. It obviously again depends on if you had a lot of previous dental work done, but if you're just healthy your mouth, then you just go with fluoride-free toothpaste, make it as natural as possible because basically you put it into your mouth and it's going to be absorbed. So there shouldn't be any chemicals. Um, there are many out there that kind of work and not the ideal one that I would have in mind coming. Mm -hmm. And so I brush my teeth once a day. That's enough for me. But I do coconut oil pulling once a day. Coconut oil pulling is just basically you take a teaspoon of coconut oil, put it in your mouth and switch it around for five to 15 minutes. You can do that while you prepare your breakfast, for example. This one soothes your whole saliva, your teeth, your pellicle, your, your structure, and also it binds fat-soluble toxins and bacteria. That's why you have to spit it out after five to 15 minutes. So it's really just an ancient Ayurvedic strategy that is way too underused. Instead of any chemical mouth rinses that will kill the oral microbiome that we have, that we want, that we wanting to have. So we don't want to disinfect everything on a daily basis. Same for fluoride. Fluoride just kills bacteria. Not good. 
So coconut oil pulling teeth brushing, do it twice a day, then you're fine. Brush your teeth twice a day, that's good. Every 12 hours to remove the biofilm because I don't know how your nutrition diet looks like. And then tongue scraping is a great strategy. You can just implement it once a day. Whenever it feels good for you, it doesn't matter. But use a copper tongue scraper. Copper is in itself antibacterial, so it helps. You just basically go down to the, yeah, to the start of your tongue at the back and then scratch it off. And with, if you do that for a couple of days, you see that your tongue shows different color, which is supposed to be, it should be like, you, like your gums. It shouldn't be reddish. It should be more like pinkish. And then it's going to be good. So a hot red tongue is also not a good sign. Even, it's not just the, the coated tongue. And, but the coat is obviously going to go away. Flossing, I see differently. I don't floss. Okay. Why I don't floss is pretty simple because of the leaky gum problem. Because most people, if they floss, they just rip it through and they always say, oh, I'm bleeding a little bit. If you bleed a little bit, you have a tiny opening again. You just ripped off your skin. Obviously, it heals quick, quick, quite fast in the mouth, but still, it's time enough for bacteria to go in there. I use a floss or a toothpick if I have something stuck in there, but not like it's designed or like we learn it in university that you should floss twice a day after your toothbrushing. It makes no sense. Again, teeth are immune against tooth decay if your nutrition lifestyle is on point. You don't have mushy teeth. You should have teeth hard as stone. That's why your lifestyle leads to beautiful and healthy teeth, which also leads to beautiful and healthy skin, which ultimately leads to a beautiful and healthy body. So simple. Health first, aesthetic second. Form follows function. It's always the same. And health, that's why you have to define. From now on, I don't lose health in the first place. The same thing as you would invest into money. First rule, don't lose money. Second rule, never lose money. In this case, first rule, never lose health. Second rule, always remember rule number one. And then you invest, whatever you do on a daily basis should give you a little bit of extra, a little bit of dividend in terms of plus. So zero is okay, health. But optimal health is 10, 15, 20, whatever you implement. And kind of like with every investment, the earlier you start, the better, but also you can start whenever. It's never too late to invest. And the dividend is longer health, younger health. You, the goal is to become as old as possible, but as young as possible from a cellular perspective. And this is possible. So um, I think there are anecdotes about Methuselah getting to 800 years. I'm not sure about this, but in the Bible and everywhere, they say that people went to 120 years without really getting old. So it's possible. And this, it's diff more difficult nowadays because we're living in a different world, but it's also a fun world. I want to live in this world. We have so many opportunities. We can do so many things. So even though it's maybe a little bit more toxic, if you work on a strategy that you detox every day, I'm a fan of detoxing every day instead of doing it once a half a year, and then you, you still want to adapt and you still want to activate all these um, genes that make you last long and healthy and keep your cells and keep your cell young. Mm. And this is again, lifestyle, nutrition, easy things like not using, uh, like having your phone in airplane mode nighttime or having your Wi-Fi switch off, it's like for free, but nobody does it, but maybe the research doesn't show it, who cares? Just live in a cage, yeah? And work on all these strategies. And that's so why I'm grateful that our people existing like you that do podcasts and spreading the info to the many. And yeah, it's yeah. going to be amazing. Guys, I look forward to this. And, we all <laughs> and then have health villages where we learn like hippies back in the day. And <laughs> we meet in whole villages all over the place and then we learn from each other. Yeah. Good things that we already knew, but we forgot. <laughs> Dr. Dom, thank you so much. I think it's going to be a really popular episode. There's so much important information that you've shared with us. Uh, so thank you for sparing your time. Of course. Thank you very much for having me. Let's do one. I do one little quick story for the Instagram. Sure. When it's coming out, but it's always good that we, we just had our time here. We, we always, we invest our time for you guys out there. So we invest times every day, five hours, just for spreading the knowledge so that we can all learn. And I believe it's important that you take this information and help others with it, like you guys listening. And I think this is sometimes, if you just, it's also cool if you're just consuming the content, but if you help it, if like changing yourself, but then others, that's, that would be even better. So I'm just doing a video. 
just on the podcast, finish with Alex Manos. What is the name of the podcast, Alex? Health Path. Awesome. That's perfect, actually. And we had a good time spreading it to you guys. Health starts in the mouth. Peace. Good. I have it. I, I'll link you. Thank you, Dr. Dolan. Appreciate it. Alex, have an amazing Monday. And yes. Yeah. When is it coming out? Uh, it will go on to YouTube today and it'll be on wow. iTunes this week. So it will be coming out very soon. Do you want do you want to send it to my guy and we share it on YouTube too? Is that good for you? Yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I will maybe you can send me an email after and yeah. then I'll link it to Victor and Victor will then take it and put it on our YouTube okay. too. So then wow. we have to, we can maximize it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Cheers, Dr. Cheers. Bye.